So I recently did this and I showed it to someone, I got some questions how I did the God rays in the background um, and got this like more organic uh, lighting look on the floor uh, where you can see the light is like coming through and light in some areas but not others. Um, you can see more up here on the building. Okay, so I use Redshift, so I'm going to show you how to do this in Redshift. Let's uh, let's jump into it. So I've got. Let's just quickly set up a scene. Let's grab a plane. Doesn't need any subdivisions on it. I'm going to grab a cube. I'm going to make this cube smaller. I'm just going to create something that my light can cast onto. Okay. So first order of business is to create a light source. So I'm going to come in and create a spotlight. Now I'm going to apply a target tag to this spotlight and then drag my cube in here. So then my spotlight is always looking at my cube and then drag my light up. So it's in a good area that can cast some God rays. So if we think about how God rays are, they're basically like sources of light that have come down and they've been interrupted by objects. Okay. So if you think about clouds, uh, when a light passes through a cloud, the cloud is denser in some places than others. So then the light is coming through stronger in some places, which creates these God rays. Um, so yeah, so there's two ways I actually go about doing this. Um, and it really depends on the scene. Um, it depends what items I have in the scene and what sort of scene it is. So if I'm doing like a like a building scene, like a city or something, then I might want some really hard shadows, okay? So the first way I do this is creating some hard shadows. So I'm gonna come in and create a cloner and I copy my cube into this cloner, control drag, um, and I'm actually gonna make the cube a lot smaller. Okay, I'm gonna make this cloner a grid array and then we're gonna cut the height of it down to one. What I'm going to cut and do is pull these cloners up and put them right in front of my light source. Okay. So you can already see they're casting shadows. So you imagine we have volum volumetric lighting coming down and they're trying to pass through these cubes, um, but they can't do it and they're creating hard shadows. So we're going to get god rays coming down around these shadows. Okay. So, how do we get god rays actually set up? So first of all, we need to come into our spotlight and we need to tell it to like be part of the volume. We want to tell it to cast volumetric light. Okay, so if you come over to the volume tab, the contribution scale here is what you want to look at. So I'm just going to pump it straight up to one. It's going to be very bright. It's going to, we're telling it to contribute to the volume 100% basically, because this going to, this can only go up to one. Okay. Um, also we turn on our, our render and we still have nothing. Okay. We need an environment that it's going to cast through. So we come in, create a redshift environment. And now I'm going to turn this on. This is going to be bright as anything. Okay. Because basically the light is being told to scatter a lot. Okay. So the scattering on here is 0 0.1. It doesn't seem that high, but my usual go-to number when I start something off like this is 0 0.001. And you see already we have have some really nice god like god rays going on um but these have these very hard shadows on the floor and see like i say this is good if you want like buildings you can even create the effect of having buildings in a scene by them casting shadows with god rays without actually having them there okay so i could have like these cubes looking like little buildings okay um they could be tiny but like on the scene they look they look big you get what i mean anyway this is the first way i do it but it's not actually my favorite way of doing it so i'm going to show you a second way the second way is through materials, okay? So I turn this off uh, and delete my cloner. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to copy my plane. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to bring it up and put it right in front of my light. So you see right now, if I turn off, I'm going to turn off my environment. So the light is being completely blocked by this plane now. Um, but I'm going to use some materials to let the light through in certain ways. So if I come here, make a material, I apply this material here, turn off our spotlight quickly because I just want to see the material. So it's a very blank default plastic material. Uh, I'm going to come in and turn the reflection off because it's just not needed. Um, okay. 
So the way material blending works in Redshift is it's very similar to uh, how layers work in Photoshop. Uh, if you think you have a you have something you want to apply and then you create a masking layer and you tell it to apply in the white areas of the masking layer, it's very similar when you think about it. So first of all, I'm going to create a material blender. This basically creates a hierarchy of materials that we can like blend together. So this is my base material. So I'm going to grab this little node and pump it in as my base color. So now we want a second material. So I'm going to copy this control drag, and we want this to be your water. Okay. So we want a material. It could be a tint of glass, glass, water, whatever you want. It's something that has uh, some transparency to it. Um, let me pump this up slightly. Uh, this is where our water, this is where our light is going to be able to get through this material. Okay. So we're going to pump this into our layer one color. Now we need a way we need another material or a masking layer to tell it where to apply this second material. So I'm going to come in and grab a noise. And whenever I grab a noise, I grab a ramp at the same time. So I'm going to pump the noise into the ramp and then pump the ramp into my output. Okay. Make sure I'm looking at the, uh, yep. So right, I'm going to turn this on because I just want to see what this looks like. So we have a noise. Uh, and now it doesn't really look like clouds. So I'm going to come in and you have three types here. You've got cell. You can, you can really just like mess around and find something stylized. But I like to go for turbulence because I think there's like little white inside bits that maybe look like clouds. Um, but my issue right now is it's going to be applying the material in the white areas. So it's actually going to be applying where I think the clouds should be. So this is why I have a wrap. If I come in and click this little invert button, turn it basically turns the gradient around okay so if i grab this black and drag it down you really start to clamp the color down good right okay so it's going to be applying in the white areas basically now you can mess around with this noise a lot there's a few there's a lot of things you can do so if i turn up like the complexity you start to get like more more of a wispy look maybe turn up the distortion a bit distortion scale but you want to find something you like basically frequency I'm going to turn down the frequency see so yeah, i think it starts to look like a little like wispy clouds i think okay so if we go back to this our material blender so this is basically our masking layer so it's going to apply our water texture in any of these white spots. So if I pump this in as my blend color one, and then grab this and then put this to my output. Perfect. Let's just get rid of this. So you can see it's applied a water material to this noise gradient. Okay. So if I turn my light back on, you can see if I come down here, it's applying it. The light is only coming through where the water is being told to like apply. So if I turn my environment back on, you can see we actually just really I'd see like, I think these god rays look a lot better. Um because they're more spread out, they look a lot more natural. Okay. But the thing I like about this one, right, is you also have these really hard shadows. And if you look out the window, and hopefully it's a sunny day for you, um, Shadows from like clouds and stuff aren't completely like dark. They're not black. Okay, um, you have GI bouncing. You have like other light sources. Um, so you can actually come in, and if you imagine black is like apply the material zero percent, and then white is a hundred percent. If I grab this black color and just turn it to like a, more of a gray, okay. So you can see here, if this is twenty percent, it means it's applying the material eight, like twenty percent. You get what I mean? So if I turn it to a grey, suddenly it's letting the light through on the other places, so it's you can light like the scene up without having these like insanely dark spots. And obviously, once you apply material to this, it starts to look a lot better um, because it won't be like as noticeable. Um, it means you can light a scene without having these super dark areas, but you also get these god rays. So if I find a good angle of this, let's find a nice angle. 
I mean, I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, that's how I do God Rays. Um, two different ways. Now, when you render this out, you can already see it's like a little noisy, right? You see it's like pixelated, it's a little noisy. Um, so to deal with that, you have really have to like pump your samples up. So my go-to number is 2048. And this basically tells you how many samples to use in this volume. Um, there's two different samples you can do. Uh, there's usually one on the light as well. Um, Spotlight doesn't have it. Uh, but if you do like a dome light or something, if I have a dome light to this. And if I turn this way down. And turn my background off. I just want this to light the scene slightly. So you can see out here that like, this is not dark anymore. Like, these areas are actually a little lit up. Yeah, you can pump samples into that as well. But yeah, that's how I do uh, volumetric lighting and god rays. Uh, if you have any questions, ask below. Hopefully I covered everything. Um, and more tutorials to come. Thank you.